Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ. And right now, I want to talk to you about how to create a GitHub repository. And you know what? I'm, gonna, I'm not just going to create that GitHub repository. I'm actually going to show you how to create the GitHub repository. But then after that, I'm going to do a quick clone, maybe even add, create a new file, add the file to the index, do a commit, and even push it back to the original GitHub repository that you just created. So you can sort of see the entire life cycle of create the repository, commit code, and push back to the server. It always makes sense to sign on first, and after you've signed on, you'll end up getting to your repositories page in GitHub, and notice there's a nice green button there that says new. So that's a great way to create a new repository. I'm gonna call mine GitHub Made Easy. It's going to be public. You know, I like adding a uh, git ignore to this particular file. I think I'll do a git ignore for Java because that's kind of the world that I live in. I also like to initialize a readme. You know, if you're going to do a clone of your repository, especially after creating it, and you don't have anything in it, you don't really know that it was cloned, right? So at least putting that readme in there is going to uh, I'm going to let you know that it was cloned properly. Yeah, a license if you want. And then you click create repository. And then there you go, Bob's your uncle. You've just got a repository created. I mean, congratulations. Uh, it's a, a pretty giant accomplishment here. Probably the next thing you want to do is clone it. So notice there's got this button up here called code. I don't know if I like the name code. It used to say something different. But if you click on that, you've got an option to, well, download a zip file. But there's also a, a link there, a URL. Click copy on that. That's a copying the URL to your GitHub repository, and then just open up a, a terminal window on Ubuntu, and then just say git clone, and then paste the name of the repository right there. That's going to pull things right down. Do a little ls there, and yeah, that's the project that was downloaded. There's a GitHub made easy. I've got some tutorials on GitHub if you're uh, of that persuasion. Right now I'm interested in uh, GitHub. Sorry, I got GitLab tutorials. There's my GitHub. I got to move in there. So you got to do CD GitHub. And there we go. We're in the we're in that particular folder. You can run some commands like uh, git ref log or git log. You know, really not too much in there right now. But uh, one thing that I do have in there is this readme file. So that's come down. So I know that I've cloned successfully. As I said, if I didn't have that file in there and I did clone and nothing showed up, how would I know that it cloned properly? Uh, the other thing that's in there is this .git folder as well. I guess you would know by that. There's a .git folder and .git ignore. If I use the ls-a switch, that shows all of the hidden files that are in that directory. So that uh, is a somewhat elucidary right there. Now, if you've actually got your project created and cloned, you know, why not? add a file to it. So you can always just do something like touch hello world. And then you can always add that to your git index. It's just your staging area. And then you know you might want to even uh, do a git commit and uh, m and do a good commit message. And now you've actually done a, a commit. So life is pretty good. Do an ls command, do git status. You know, everything has been committed. And you can even do a git ref log, and you can actually see that commit there in the ref log. Ref log is local, whereas uh, just git log is everything. Um, and I don't know, what would you do after that? I guess the last thing that you would do is maybe just push back. So do a git push to origin. What's the username? I think it's Cameron MCNZ. It's my Twitter handle too, and uh, so. Go follow me on Twitter. Now, I can't remember what my password was here, but I'm guessing. Oh, and look at that. Life is good. I think I guessed successfully because it says that it pushed. And if I go back to github.com, there's the GitHub Made Easy repository. Look, that hello world file's not there. It's, uh, it's just a sleight of hand. I got to do a refresh. And once I do the refresh, there it is, hello world. So that's how easy it is to create a repository in GitHub and then even do some basic functions like cloning it, creating some files, adding those files to the index, doing commit, and even pushing back to the GitHub repository.
And there you go, that's how easy it is to create a GitHub repository. And as I said, I kind of stacked the deck a little bit there and went beyond just the creation, but to the commit, to the adding code, to the pushing back to the server. But it's all really straightforward once you get a handle of the basic Git and GitHub commands. Anyways, if you want to learn more about Git, GitHub, DevOps, anything to do with server-side development, head over to the server-side.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. And if you're interested in following my antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ.